Hey everybody, welcome to the Ravens Outpost, field report number two. Today I'd uh, like to talk about what you do out here while you're in the wilderness, what you're looking for, and what you need to be aware of. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what you're looking for because you know what you're looking for. Usually, if you're uh, of the cryptid variety of enthusiast, whether you're looking for Bigfoot, Dogman, Pugwudgies, or whatever, that's what you're looking for. Now that that's out of the way, Let's talk about what else is out here. What else could follow you home? Now I've been in the um, I've been in the biz a while. I've done my fair share of uh, paranormal investigation, and I've had my fair share of paranormal encounters. both of the spiritual and cryptid variety. Seen a UFO a time or two. But there are, there are things you need to be aware of, things you need to prepare for when you come out here. When you're out in the woods and you're beating and banging on these trees, it may not be just the force folk that you're stirring up. It may be that there are spirits out here that don't take kindly to being disturbed. For those of you who don't believe in that type of thing, see it. I wish you the best. And I hope you take precaution when whatever it is out there that's in the woods follows you home and starts causing mischief and strife with your family because you pissed it off and got out here and did something you weren't supposed to do. When you get out here, it's not just you and the Sasquatch and the squirrels, chipmunks, and deer and bear and fox and blah, 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 blah. There's other things out here. And if you're one of the folks who actually do believe in the afterlife, in the uh, ghost phenomena, the spirit phenomena, if you're religious enough to believe that there are spirits clean and unclean out here. They don't all dwell in houses, folks. They don't all hang around graveyards, folks. There's quite a few out here in the forest. There's many, many, many tales and legends of forest spirits. And they come from somewhere. Not just an... Uh, <laughs> okay, I got to stop myself from, you know, being very juvenile and start calling names for people. Legends start from fact. A lot of these stories weren't just stories at one time. They were warnings. They weren't hyperbole. They weren't just um, tales to scare your kids. They were warnings. So you would be careful and be able to come back home. Hunters back in the day would take their time and prepare for the hunt. 
And I'm not just talking putting on the paint and the camo. Okay? They would pray up. They would cleanse themselves. Make sure their spirit was right. Make sure their mind was right. When you get out here and you're doing your thing, I beg you, please just get your mind right. I've talked a lot in a, in a couple of videos about how um, animals and even us as humans can sense intent. Um, like you're standing in a grocery store, you're in the checkout line, you're perusing one of the tabloids that's on the magazine rack there as you're waiting to put your stuff on the, on the little belt there to get checked out. And all of a sudden you feel this and you turn around and look and somebody's staring a hole in you. They have intent. You sensed it. It's an innate ability that we all have. But most of us choose to ignore. It's the same thing when you're out here and you get that funny feeling that something isn't right, something's amiss. And you need to leave. It's that same sixth sense. It's that same intuition. We all have it. It's just been buried deep and, and put way back in our psyche. It's been dumbed down. Um, and a lot of it has to do with our pineal gland. Um, for those of you who don't know or, or not very familiar with the pineal gland, check it out. Look it up. Um... Those of you who are familiar with Ron Moorhead, um, he talks a lot about the pineal gland, and he's right. There's a lot about the pineal gland. Um, we have been dumbed down, okay, by the foods we eat and the chemicals we take into our body, and it calcifies, it calcifies the pineal gland, and it dumbs us down. That is a very, very useful tool in everyday life. It could save us so much heartache. Now, getting back to being out here in the woods, there are spirits out here. Don't know where they're at. Don't know when they'll come. You don't know what's going to happen. You've got to be prepared. You know, it's like I step out the door... I'm going to the grocery store. I have a sidearm on my hip. Do I have uh, any thought of using it? No, I pray to God I don't ever have to use it. But here's the thing, I'd rather have it and not need it, and need it and not have it. And the same thing goes with being prepared out here in the woods. Please, folks, please, 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 please. Do yourself a favor, and look it up. And just take a few seconds, few a, a minute. It takes less than a minute to get your mind right. Wu saw it. Oh, saw. You know, <laughs> get your mind right when you come out here in the woods. It could save you a whole lot of trouble. And another thing, and this is, goes from personal experience. The the most interaction I've ever had with forest folk while I'm out here, while I have been out here, is when my mind was right. It was clear. I got my sidearm on my hip, but I wasn't thinking about it. It's just that it's just there. It's a tool like um, me carrying a, a tape measure, you know, to measure tracks and measure strides and measure height of something or other. It's just a tool. And same thing with this. It may look like some simple old redneck, but uh, please, folks, get your mind right. It could save you a lot, prepare you a lot. Um, maybe if you do have an encounter and your mind's right, maybe it won't be so bad on you. We need, we need to be prepared in so many different ways. And being forewarned is forearmed. You know, 
it, it needs to it needs to be foremost in our in our thoughts when we get out here. When I step out of the vehicle, I take a minute to take a deep breath and just relax, just just totally relax and enjoy what's around me. But also prepare to block anything that's going to be invading my mind, my spirit. Because I do not want to take a bunch of mess home with me. I learned this a long time ago before I even got started coming out in the woods. But that's the thing, I didn't practice it when I first started getting out in the woods. It wasn't until I had uh, an experience out here that I said, you know, I need to do the same thing here as I do on a on a, uh, an investigation involving spirits, All right? So that's that's some advice I wanted to try and pass along to you. And I hate to sound preachy, but I care about every last one of you who get out here and and do your thing. And I just want to let you know that there are more things out here that you can't see. It's a possibility that there are more things out here that you can't see and are around you that could follow you home. So, be prepared. Pray up. Understand that, you know, uh, that mental and spiritual preparedness is every bit as important as being physically prepared. Okay? So, this is the end of another field report. And uh, I'll get back to you next time. Until then, love you, man.